Hello Virgo, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you and beautiful star energy. Uh, I think this is how you know you're on the right path. You know, the star uh, is, a, is a card that kind of represents this, um, well, illumination. It's inner illumination, it's outer illumination, um, but it's starlight, right? It's kind of us feeling uh, a guiding force in our life, getting some insight maybe into um, where that guiding light is taking us. Yeah. So I think this is really good. This is a good way to begin. Now we've got to put some other cards around it. We need a little bit of context. Oof, nine of pentacles. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, I've got to say. We've got the depth of the queen of cups here. We have a ten of swords. Okay, this is, I, I was kind of feeling this might be the case here. Because I think the star is really um, illuminating a lot for us. Especially shedding light on what this situation was. And why it's a good thing that it's over. Okay? Why it's a good thing that this is over. Well, because your real future, your real success is... Oh, now we have more water energy. Your real success is uh, is coming right now, right? We've got that art or temperance card as well. We've got another court card, princess of swords here, seven of swords. The world or universe card in the position of what we don't want. And then another court card, we have the knight uh, of wands here. So we have fire and water kind of um, the blending of that fire and water. And really, I feel like what this is, is an activation of your your passion, right? Your commitment, your dedication, your readiness, your eagerness, yeah? It's ambition, it's, uh, well, it's enthusiasm, right? And I feel that this is us kind of getting, starting to see the signs about how good this is gonna be, starting to realize that this isn't a situation that we need to really lament very much or grieve even. You know, I feel like this is like, okay, they know that, that was a cycle of my life, that's over now and I'm ready for what's coming next, you know? Um, and I really think that this is kind of the, this is the beginning of that. Uh, I think that this is, you know, something in the past has ended, 10 of swords. Um, and it, it felt at the time that that, that was probably um, a large part of your life, okay? So it could be a career, it could be a job, it could be a relationship, it could be just a where you lived or how you lived or whatever it was, right? It could be a frame of mind, an attitude, I don't know. But it's done now. And I think through the dismantling of whatever this was, is really spirit showing you all that that will be. Okay. So showing you how what was the loss of the Ten of Swords really is a gain. Okay. And it's maybe hard to see things that way, but that's what the star does. The star illuminates things that we, you know, maybe haven't noticed, haven't looked at perspectives and insights that maybe we haven't thought of yet. And that's kind of the purpose of the star energy. Now the star energy illumines first of all, because we can see the light coming in from above, right? That spiritual light, it's a cup, it's water, you know, energy. Um, we could see that it's coming from above and that is illuminating what's within us. And then also the lights being poured out beneath, which is kind of illuminating the ground and the path that we're to walk right? But we also have this idea of the actual water energy above and below you, right? So I think that this is, um, this is a couple of things. We think of the water energy now that's kind of coming, uh, coming in, right? And this is the, our, this is our ability to give and receive 
love and affection. It's the Knight of Cups. It's some Cancer energy. It might be related to your, um, it might literally be related to how you are interacting with a Cancer person in your life. Okay. Or what that dynamic is. Yeah. But I feel like this is us kind of um, being able to receive that love and affection. And then with the Queen of Cups, really allowing it to sink in, you know, really, um, really de deciding, determining, I don't know, uh, being aware of gaining the insight into whether or not um, this is what we want, right? Whether or not this was something that really is regrettable and, and um, something that we are going to kind of grieve or have, you know, some sort of remorse, or we're going to miss this situation. Um, but also kind of this, this eagerness to move forward and say, okay, I'm, well, I'm ready for this next chapter, you know? So it's really, a, it's a lot of this water energy. And I think it's the stars illuminating a lot of your emotions uh, that are there, what's inside of you right now, how you feel about things, right? Putting things into perspective regarding your uh, your feelings and your emotions, and then also showing you how we can move forward with things. So we've got the, the Nine of Pentacles here, which is all about gain. It's all about the progress. It's all about moving forward, this card, right? It's a, a very active card. It's a number nine, so it's a verb instead of a the ten, which is kind of a state. This is a state of something that wasn't working. And now it's in the past. There's no There's no life. There's no energy left in this one. Right. This one has now become just a an empty shell. It's become something that is, um, it's not uh, it, it's not animated anymore. Right. And I think that spirit is showing you the way forward and um, showing you angles of this that may allow us to see the true meaning behind it. The reason why this was what it was and why it's not there anymore and getting us excited about the future. Now let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. It's going to go here, Bob Ross, right on top. Happy little Bob. And uh, we're not going to look at that card until the very end, all right, but it will tie everything together and give us our confirmation. If at any point during this reading you feel like you know what that card is, put your prediction in the comments. We can do it together. We can make it a group exercise. All right. Let's look around the room. Um, very interesting uh, major arcana cards. We have the star, temperance, and the universe. All right. The star and art and the world. All right. So I think that these really are... Um, significant cards when you put them in context together, right? And if this was just the reading here, these three cards, um, I would feel like what we're experiencing is um, we're getting a sense of the, the perfection of the universe, right? We're understanding how, how we are a part of the whole. We're understanding how we are meant to... Um, to harmonize with the world around us. So it's kind of a, it's, it's a feeling like we're, we're finding our place in the world. That the universe, see this card on its own was over here in the position of the difficulty, right? Kind of what we don't want. And I feel like this is kind of empty space. This is a feeling like, you know, I don't know where I am. If space is infinite, how could we ever have any kind of coordinates, right? How could we, we ever know where we are or what we're doing if, you know, so it's kind of a cold, vast, lonely feeling there. But what we see with the star card being kind of blended in with this, with the universal mind, right? Or with the, the universal energy is we're starting to feel uh, this sort of comfort that we are, yeah, we are part of the whole. You know, that the universe really is here and conscious and I'm part of that. And that's a very special um, realization here. So with the art card in the middle, it's kind of like we're going between individuality and this kind of universality. Okay, going between the one and the many. See, the universe, the heavens, the company of stars. Well, you are one individual in that company. And so it's kind of like now there's this confidence or this pride that you're counted among the stars, you know, uh, against other conscious and creative beings. 
right? So I feel like this is on, on a fundamental level. It's a true spiritual realization. It's a, real, a realization of your uniqueness, but also of our togetherness in that uniqueness, you know? Um, so very, very deep spiritual meaning here for you right now, okay? And I think that this really is only the beginning. Um, I think that with the, let's see, we've got fire, we've got, we're, you know, we're kind of on the, on the river here. We've got this water. And, and I think some of it is, is us going vertically as well, right? Uh, as, you know, as much as we have to go uh, horizontally in life. But I think the vertical path is very interesting for you with the water energy. We've got, um, we've got our air energy here, which is, of course, the human mind and the way we communicate with people, the way we communicate with ourselves. Um, and then we've got, you know, literally the earth smack dab in the middle because the earth is the, the field in which we, we operate. And the, it's the <clears throat> it's the field of experience, right? It's the field within which we have our relationships. And we are just a ball of energy, a ball of light that is bouncing around the field and, and interacting with other balls of light, right? And we come closer to another group of stars and we kind of, we start to connect with those people or we sometimes pull away and we got this distant feeling. We're not really, you know, the threads of light that connect us all are a little bit thinner when we're farther away, but they're still there. Um, so really, it's this whole experience of, of being pure energy and how we are existing as sometimes more subtle, sometimes more dense accumulations of energy, depending on where we are and who we're with. So what I mean by all that gibberish is that sometimes, you know, we are, we are clustered in this thing here, whatever this situation was for you. And I feel like you're, you've gone through this natural period of just kind of stepping away from everything, you know, of kind of going within, being within yourself. And that's, that's Queen of Cups too. The Queen of Cups is very depth work, very deep emotional kind of exploration, right? Sitting inside of ourselves for a while. So I think really embracing that hermit energy, which is your power card. Maybe we'll get that in the mystery card. But I feel after this situation ended, whatever this was, this was, it, then this doesn't have to necessarily be anything bad or traumatic or anything like that. It could just be the ending of a contract, the ending of a, of a school course, you know, um, maybe the graduation. Um, it's something that really has, it's all the life is gone. This is the, this is your house after the party. You know, it's just the life is gone from it now. And it's just the remnants of what was there. Memories may still be good, right? Probably a mix of memories, you know, um, but that was a situation that ended. And I think that when we, when we experience that kind of an ending or, or we, we are, we're moving out of that situation, we tend to kind of withdraw our light a little bit and we, we get into a little bit of introspection. We've got to kind of recapitulate. We've got to debrief with ourselves, right? Before we're ready to kind of blend with the universal energy again and kind of get back to the world and get back to other groups and our friends and family and all of these kinds of things. And it doesn't mean that, that you are literally isolating. What it means that is there, there is a deep um, and intense inner work that takes place conscious or unconscious when we, um, when we make these transitions from this intense cluster of energy to then not having that anymore. Right. And then we kind of exist as just our own cluster of energy. And then we, uh, you know, we start interacting with other life, you know, light. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the nine of pentacles, I think is showing that the progress is moving forward, that we are indeed blending. Um, we're, we're getting back out there into the world and we're, we've now kind of, um, we've done that, that retrospective work of understanding what this was because the star is helping us to do that, right? It's kind of that spiritual energy, seeing it as light. We understand what this was and we understand the lessons from it. We understand, um, all of the emotions that were involved here, good and bad. And we understand why this is done now. And it's a, just a completely natural thing that it's time to move forward, right? So we got the nine of pentacles. I think that you're in a very constructive energy right now. 
I think that you're looking for ways now to reconnect, to, um, to, to find other forms of energy to interact with, right? And to, to create the future that we're looking for, right? To continue living our best life and building our best life and accomplishing our goals in a very practical way because of that nine of pentacles. Now, with the water energy, I feel like we're making a lot of progress. We'll move that card over here. I think we're making a lot of progress going up the path of the, up the central pillar of the path of the dove, right? Going from this very deep introspective, kind of veiled, uh, the veiled queen of cups, which means that it takes some investigation to really understand everything that's going on within us. How we feel about this 10 of swords and why we feel that way and what it means for us and all that stuff. But then I also think that the veil here is just kind of um, that we are, we're not really sharing that experience with everybody, right? You don't just walk into a room and suddenly start telling everybody how you feel about something that happened to you, you know, last month or last year or whatever we're talking about. So it's kind of, um, this is something deeply personal. It's something that we're not showing everybody, right? Nor should we. But what we realize is that we do this work and eventually we have to then kind of do the other end of the, uh, of the star card here and we have to start expressing ourselves out into the world. So if this was the ending of a relationship or this was some, there's some nostalgia here for the, the university courses or that job now that, that you've kind of, um, you know, that cycle is over, that, that period of time is done in your life. Now we're ready to find the next thing. Now we're ready to get out and share our gift, share our love, find something else to be passionate and fall in love with again, right? Could be a person, could be a job, could be an idea, whatever it is. Um, you know, sometimes we have these, very often I think, and, and I can think of even just jobs that I've had where it's like, um, you know, there was a natural ending to it, but there's always these kind of fond memories of it. And I understand why I couldn't stay there, why I had to leave, why it was better for me to move on. Um, you can't stay somewhere where you're, you're kind of limited, you know? So if, I, I don't know if there's a, you work, I work for a small company and um, it was a moving company. And uh, you know, I, I did the best that I could. I was there for a few years and it, there was a point where the owners just said, hey, you know, there's nothing more we can offer you here. I was maxed out on, on my hourly wage. Um, there was a really small company, only like five or six employees. And they just said, you know, we can't offer you anything else. There's nowhere, there's nowhere else to promote you. So, you know, um, we, they were encouraging me to, you know, to kind of find, um, kind of the next step up in my life. And, um, and uh, they weren't, you know, they weren't getting rid of me or anything. At least I don't think so. Um, but it, there was fond memories of that. But I realized that, yeah, I, I can't stay here forever as much as I enjoy the job and all of this. Like, it's kind of a natural progression to keep moving. That's part of this nine of, of pentacles. And uh, so I think that, you know, we, we do the introspective work. That water kind of goes inside and we focus on that. We try to get a clearer, more clear understanding of how we feel about this thing and what it meant to us. And um, then eventually we just say, all right, I'm ready. Let's get out there and do it. Let's go, let's get out there and, and uh, you know, find something, find the next thing that's meant for me because it's a progression. Life is forward moving progress. And I feel like that's what you're doing. I feel like this is just the beginning of this process for you. And uh, I think the art card here is, it's a mixture of, of kind of excitement and joy and also a little bit of reluctance, nostalgia, a little bit of kind of um, those fond memories. And I just, I kind of want to stay in that kind of, I like the people, I like the work, but I know that, you know, from my, I was in my 20s. Uh, so not too long ago, right? Uh, and I realized that, yeah, I've, you know, I want to keep moving forward in life and see where life takes me next. And it's just kind of, you, you understand that feeling of, this is just, I'm holding on to this, but it's really, it's time to keep going, you know? And it doesn't mean that there's any hard feelings or anything like that. In fact, quite the opposite, I think. Uh, so we understand the purpose and we, um, we see that there is a, a strategy to it all. There is a, a plan to it all, but um, we have these, you know, the, the kind of mixed feelings about it. Moving to the path of the serpent, we've got the of course, Princess of Wand, uh, Princess of Swords, Seven of Swords, and uh, 
this is part of that process that we we've, we've pretty much already talked about these cards especially the princess of swords because it's kind of um you know it, it's that part of us that really doesn't want to leave you know that's trying to fight off the signs it's like this is when you know you, you think you're just about to get sick you know you have that tickle in your throat and you're trying to fight it off we're getting really defensive here we're trying to keep it at bay we don't want the moment to happen we're doing the vitamin c we're drinking a ton of water um whatever else we do saunas you know i don't know things like this um we try to fight it off you say no 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 it's not happening i'm, I'm denying it right um but despite our best efforts it happens and it's the natural part of things. But there's that part of us that's trying to just fight against that and say, no, 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 I can still, I can stay here. You know, I can keep working here for another, you know, five, 10, 20 years. That's all right. I, li I like it here. Um, convincing, trying to convince ourselves that um, we can slow down the progress, that we can kind of pause things and just let me stay here for a little while longer, you know. Um, but we realize that there is this kind of central path that we're on and it's kind of this star energy that's giving us this sense of this forward destiny. And uh, as much as we want to take these little side trips and we want to take these detours and, and enjoy these other things, but we realize we can't just stay and linger. You're on a road trip. You don't stop at the world's biggest ball of yarn or whatever. And you don't just live there permanently. Right? You don't just say, all right, kids, this is where we live now and put your tent up and your trailer and all that stuff. Um, it's just a visit, you know? And a lot of things in our life are kind of just, uh, just a visit. It's just, um, it's different classrooms. You know, you don't stay in the third grade for forever. Eventually it's, you know, and that's why I feel that there's kind of a school thing here because it's almost like, I got to know all these other students, my classmates, I, I know the, the teacher, professor, whatever the instructor, and I don't want to move on, you know? And for me, I remember when I was in EMT school, which was just, it's literally one semester. Um, by the end of it, you know, we were all kind of in that mode where it's just like, we feel like a family. We don't want to leave. We don't want to, you know, we know that obviously, yes, we're all kind of, not all of us, but we're, we're ending the course. We're passing the course. We're moving on. We're taking the the NREMT exam, and, and we're going to move forward from there, you know. And uh, but we still had this feeling of being a family where we didn't want the course to end, you know. It was fun coming into the classroom every day and doing doing our work together as a group, and you know, uh, we we bonded and we it was a team, right? Um, but we realize that each of us has this ace of swords right in the middle of our lives. And this is kind of that thread that brings us forward. And we know that, yeah, this was just, this was just one stop along the way. And um, sometimes it's hard to really to, to do that. We, sometimes we don't want to let go of things, right? And then we, we hear about people that they, um, and I'm sure we, we all do this, but we, we tend to, romanticize the past a little bit, you know, and we should be making progress and looking forward and moving forward. But a lot of us kind of get stuck with talking about the past, right? And I think as we get older, we start doing that more and more, especially if we, if our creative drive diminishes a little bit. Okay. If we're not thinking of the future so much and, and pushing forward to continue making progress, then we tend to kind of, we talk about the glory days, you know, and I do that too. And, you know, um, I feel like hopefully I still got a lot of, uh, a lot of progress left to make in life. So I think that's part of the, the air and, and water stuff that's going on with you right now. But I really love these last two cards, especially the universe shows that we are, um, well, it's, it's a mixed bag because we could be looking at it again. Like we are isolated and cold and alone and everything's very distant. You know, there's many light years between stars up there. I don't know if you knew that. Um, you know, it, uh, when we, when we look at the sky at night, uh, and my wife and I were looking at the, uh, the Northern lights here the other night, but when we look at the sky, we see all these stars, clusters of stars, constellations of stars, star system, everything looks pretty packed in because we've just got this field of vision like this and everything's there, you know? But that's just, that's kind of our perspective. If we actually get over there, 
we realize that there are immense distances between all of these stars that we see. And that's a little, I think, overwhelming, or it's a little bit, it's kind of like getting out into the real world and realizing that the people aren't as close and connected as we were. You know, when we get to the class, we're in that classroom, I'm talking about myself. We're in that classroom, we all feel very close. We're a cluster of stars there. We're a constellation of stars in that classroom. But we all get out into the field and we take our exam, we start working in the industry, and we realize that, wow, I'm kind of just one lone star out here and I've got to find a, a new kind of constellation. And so you get started with a, with a company um, and, uh, and then you hopefully will, will feel that kind of constellation with, with those new people as well. Uh, so I feel like we're kind of in the transition point here, right? And it's the, it's the point where we, we left one constellation and we feel kind of maybe alone that we're traveling through space, but there's, we're, we're getting closer to that other field of energy and we're going to, um, we're going to mesh, we're going to connect again with those, right? And I feel it's really uh, important for you to keep this Knight of Wands, right? This is very fiery energy. This is... Um, this, this I think is a lot of gusto, a lot of zeal and zest. We talk about that on this channel. And I'm starting to like that word zest, you know, um, because I feel like this is that excitement that we're just, we're ready to go. Yeah, I feel this way and I'm, I have to deal with these emotions and thoughts about this situation that's ending, but I am oh so excited about the future, right? So I think this is really stunning. I think this is that energy that just is, is so eager and enthusiastic for what's coming your way, right? And you've got to, uh, you've got to trust the process. You've got to trust yourself, right? You, um, we don't want to overthink it. You're in this new company, let's say, you know, for me, leaving the classroom, going out into the world and taking the exam and then finding a job, you know. Um, we've, I, I, I had to be all in. I had to be all there and present in the moment in that new environment, right? If I was there, maybe just in body, but my heart and mind were still back in the classroom, kind of thinking about the, the good old days, um, I would have missed the opportunity to connect with these new people. And this, I think, the Knight of Wands represents the unification of energy, being fully present in the moment, and not stuck in the past, but no, both, you know, body and mind, uh, heart and soul, um, the conscious and unconscious minds are moving forward in the same direction. And we're fully present in the moment, you know, so that we can experience that new environment and, and connect with it, you know, connect energies with it. Let's look at the mystery card. I wonder if it'll be the hermit. I don't feel it will be. Uh, I'm kind of looking for an ace here, I think. But if you have a prediction, put it in the comments. We're thinking aces, aren't we? Let's see. This is the chariot. Interesting. Interesting. This is the Cancer superpower card, and this is also the Cancer superpower card. So I feel like the Cancer sign is very important to you somewhere. You either have strong Cancer placement, or there is a Cancer person in your life that is involved in this in some way. Okay. Um... But I think this card is kind of our, this is, you know, this is, uh, it, it's that kind of mixed blessing. It's the bittersweet moment, you know, where we've got the car packed and we're just about to get in and we're saying goodbye to our friends or whatever. And we got to get in the car and we got to go, you know, we've, we're leaving the past behind in a way, you know, in a, in a real way, I think. And this is your ability and your strength to do that. And this, I think, really confirms that we are traveling forward here. Um, and this might be you, maybe you're going off to college. Maybe, maybe your loved ones, your kids or something, are going off to college or they're moving out or something like that. Um, this doesn't necessarily need to be exactly uh, what's taking place in your life, but it could be that you're looking at this from the other side, where this is someone is, is going through this process. Um, maybe the cancer person. Um, but we were, we're ready and we're capable, we're fortified, we're strong, right? And, uh, I think this is a beautiful confirmation. Yeah. And I think we're headed in a really beautiful direction. Now we're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, there's a link up top. There is one down below. New readings for Virgo, Tuesday and Saturday. All right. 
uh, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is free. It doesn't cost anything. Um, leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.